we have seen a significant increase in patients who survive both to just return of circulation and to survival to discharge since we implemented the rescue pod and, and the new AHA guidelines in 2005. The, I think the combination of those things has really been an incredible asset. We had a, a great uh, event occur. It's never great when somebody collapses in cardiac arrest. That's usually pretty bad for them and their family, but they were at a movie theater and uh, we thought that just the venue, you know, in order to be able to get into the to the movie theater, uh, get the ambulance, and get get our equipment in, it was it was a long ways in, and um, I really didn't give this guy a lot of a chance. And um, it turns out, uh, what we applied the rescue pod, we uh, 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 did compressions, and uh, we got a pulse back. And I really didn't. Again, I didn't really think that it was going to be real uh, effective. Um, I, I thought, you know, the downtime was just going to be too long and he was not going to survive. But um, he was cooled uh, in the hospital and, uh, uh, and then had a complete uh, total recovery, neurologically intact, walked out of the hospital and uh, came by to thank me. And uh, I think that was kind of a turning point for me. Uh, I don't really like putting people in, in the ICU uh, where we prolong a life on, you know, life support and ventilatory support and they never actually have any neurological function uh, returning. I think that's agonizing for families. So uh, it was really when this man walked out uh, I, that I thought, wow, um, the, again, the combination of uh, therapies that we're using today, including the ITD and the, the rescue pod, uh, has been, I think, a, a career changer.